So I've always had people ask me when it comes to hydration, well, how do I know if I'm hydrated or not? Like how much, how many, how much fluid should I actually drink, you know, for me as an individual or for this specific sport, right? So we're going to go over a couple of different common ways that you can check your hydration status um, on a regular basis. The quickest, easiest, most efficient way, as you can see in the bottom right corner, is just checking your pee. You pee every day. Um, it allows you to be able to look at what the color is. And you can see here, right, if we're going to the bottom part here, you know, if you're really dark, we don't want to be dark like apple juice. That's a really high indicator that we're dehydrated. And if you're already dehydrated, you're probably already feeling symptoms, tired, fatigue, headache, right? Um, maybe slow, sluggish. A lot of those things might commonly pop up. So you can see on the top side here, right? Light like lemonade, pale yellow, yellow, right? A good indicator that we are in a good situation that we are hydrated. And if we're these lighter yellow colors, a majority of your day, that's at least a quick feedback system to you to tell you that you're keeping on top of your hydration and you're doing a pretty good job, right? A second way that you can see, you know, if you're back to your baseline weight from your activity is weighing yourself. So if you look at one pound, right? One pound equals 16 ounces of fluid, okay? So to give you an example, right? Like let's say I'm a basketball player and I have an hour and a half practice. And before I weighed myself, uh, before I went out to that practice, I was 220 pounds. When I got done with that practice, came off the court, uh, you know, your dietitian or yourself, you weighed yourself. And then all of a sudden you're 218. So if you do 220, which was your initial body weight, and you minus that by 218, that means you lost two pounds of fluid during that practice from your sweat, okay? So obviously if one pound is 16 ounces, then if you do two pounds lost times um, 16 ounces, that's 32 ounces of fluid that you now need to take in within the next one to two hours to rehydrate and get you back to baseline. Right. So that's why a lot of times after training is done, we're definitely encouraging athletes to try to get one something salty. Okay. Or electrolytes. And that could be a Gatorade, a propel um, G2, G0, right. Depending on which options you like, or depending on how hard the practice or training was um, maybe it's salting your food. Maybe it's getting a salty snack, right? Salt specifically encourages thirst. So it's going to make you want to drink more. And then two, right, wherever water goes in your body or wherever um, salt goes in your body, water is going to follow, right? And if we look at the word carbohydrate, carbohydrate, wherever carbohydrates are, water is going to be involved, right? So carbs, salt, <clears throat> and fluid all cohesively like to be around and with each other. So when you're eating those things together, right, quicker refueling, quicker rehydration, and you're getting that feedback to your brain because the salt's making you thirsty to make you want to drink. So there's a lot of different pluses that can come specifically out of that, right? So weighing yourself before and after training could be a really good indicator to tell you how much weight you're typically losing during a training or a practice or even a game in that situation. Um, and it's not uncommon for some athletes, right? I've had athletes that have, you know, working with football before in the past. I've had athletes lose 10 to 15 pounds of fluid in a practice. You know, I, I tell their athletes that and they look at me like, that's, that's crazy. Like, that's not possible. Like you'd have to now drink gallons of water to regain that water back. And I'm like, yes, that's correct. You do have to drink about that much water to get it back. So that's why sodium plays such an important part to rehydrate you quicker. Cause if you think about it, right. Some athletes, they train in the morning and then they have a second training in the afternoon, right? So maybe you had a lift or individual work in the morning, but now your practice is in the afternoon. Well, I got to rehydrate and refuel before I get to that next training or practice. Because if I don't, I'm not going to be back to baseline. And now that might negatively affect my performance and how I play going into that second bout of activity or training during the day. So that's two options where we can test our hydration. Um, the third option you can do is called urine specific gravity. Um, and looking at obviously the different uh, solutes that are in your pee. And that basically what you do is you take a pee sample from the athlete. Um, I typically recommend 
instead of using the dropper on the little USG that has the uh, refractometer there, I usually try to use the pen, a lot better accuracy. And, and that's some recommendations I've got from uh, some other dietitians in the field. Um, I also got the chance um, at one of my last positions I worked at to work with Gatorade Sports Institute. Um, so got to work with a lot of different professionals there that obviously were experts in hydration. Um, and, and now there's, there's tons of different stuff out to also track your hydration, right? And you have obviously sweat patches. You can, you, you can check to see how much fluid you're losing and calculate that. Um, you could look at how much obviously sodium or electrolyte content you're losing, and that can help kind of give you a little bit more of an individual approach per athlete. Um, to determine how much electrolytes and fluids you need going in training and coming out of training. Uh, so that's something that's out and available now too. Um, definitely has some kinks to work out with that for that to be a better option. Um, there's another company I came across where um, they have a sensor that you can put in the urinal that you pee into that's supposed to be able to track your hydration levels. Um, and it's supposed to pop up a color to give feedback to the athlete um, depending on how hydrated they are. Again, some of this technology you're going to have to take with a grain of salt. Um, cause some of it may be great, maybe still in development. Um, uh, maybe just gives a quick indicator back to the athlete that hopefully helps to change with their behavior, but may not be always the most hundred percent accurate. Whereas some of these really simplistic things, even though they've been done for a long period of time, sometimes it can be a little bit laborious but sometimes they can provide the kind of the quick and easy stabilized information that we want to be able to take in, receive, apply, and then be able to give back to the athlete either in live real time or sometime that during that day. So hopefully they can make some type of change and improve their hydration routine. Um, you know, I'm also starting to see stuff out now where, you know, they have, you know, these wristbands with a device that you can stick on your skin that's different from a sweat patch that's supposed to analyze your sweat and analyze your hydration level. Um, I mean, a lot of that stuff, again, still has a lot of work to go um, for it to be accurate and consistent and, you know, do some more studies on it. But it's, it's definitely great to see a lot of companies are, are really going outside the box because again, with any of this, anything, anytime now, right. There's with sports science and the way we're collecting a lot of information the quicker you collect the information, the more accurate it is, and the faster you can disseminate that information to coaches, to players, to other staff that you're working with, right? That allows quicker and faster feedback to be given. And the faster and more accurate feedback we can give to all those different people, then hopefully that allows us to make a quicker change in behaviors and habits to then hopefully set up a better routine, better protocols and allow our athletes as a whole or as a team to be in a lot better situation um, and not put themselves at high risk for injuries, illness, um, or having a, you know, a decrement or, or a loss or a decrease in their performance at the end of the day. Um, again, so to kind of recap everything, you can check your P to C your hydration status. You can do pre and post weights. You can do urine specific gravity testing you know, go out and see what's, what's out there with, you know, the Gatorade sports patch that's connected with the app. You know, they have the options where you can pee in the urinal and check your hydration status. They have a lot of wearables that are starting to come out. You know, I wouldn't say a hundred percent say like invest and that's the only thing you should do. Always have your, always keep simple and keep to your basics and, and have something that's going to allow you to optimize and do your job at the, at the best possibility that you need to. But don't be afraid to also branch out and experiment with other stuff that's out there um, because you never know what might be useful down the road or as, as technology advances, you know, some of those things may be more applicable, more accurate, and maybe something you can shift to um, that ends up helping your team and really fits into your environment of athletes that you're working with.